So this is my 12 inch cube. And in it, there are four glow light tetras. There are five little least keelyfish. They're relatively elusive. Occasionally one or two will come out. There's a couple in the back there. There's six pygmy quarries, even more elusive. And countless red cherry shrimp. That's a little planted tank. Got a Anubias in it, a couple of uh, java fern, the window of java ferns, a narrow leaf java fern back there, uh, bronze crip, and uh, I think it's Sagittarius. And there's, you can see right in the middle, let me find my finger right there, there's one that's got a side shoot, a runner coming off of it. And I planted a couple more of those in the back and this one's already set in off a side shoot and then all the way in the back is just a little piece of a crypt spiralis and eventually that'll hit the top of the tank and run and there's also a couple pieces of uh, salvinia there's one that got stuck down at the bottom here with the flow but there's a couple floating up at the back in the top there let's see if we can go this way there they are um, and all this in the water are freshly hatched baby brine shrimp. So this is what I, I try and feed these guys as often as I can. And I'm really trying to encourage a spawn with the, uh, the pygmy quarries. So I did a water change last night and I try to do a water change about every day. And I'm, I've not been real consistent about that. I had seen on Keeping Fish Simple where he said you do a water change every day for about a week and it should encourage a spawn with a lot of the quarries. Uh, he wasn't specific about which ones and it really doesn't matter. So I'm giving it a try with the pygmies. Uh, but all the fish love the, uh, the baby brine. And I had even fed frozen brine in here and they're a lot bigger than the baby brine, obviously. And they settle to the bottom and the cherry shrimp fight over those big pieces of, uh, of uh, frozen brine shrimp. So they're, they like that as well. They're all over the place. They're just they, they are like little water roaches. They are fun to watch. And there's some smaller ones right there on that branch. And, you know, and I wouldn't be surprised to see even smaller ones like right there on the top of that rock. Because um, I get, seems like new ones every few days. And, and this tank is just, it's being overrun. I'm, I'm going to have to at some point, I guess, try and get some out and put them in another tank. There are a few in here that are really, really dark. And I saw one cruise by in the back a little bit ago. Um, there's one up there on that branch, a lot darker, red legs. Um, and that's the kind of the goal is to get, get some of the darker ones out of here and put those in a separate tank and see if I can just you know, line breed those and, and have a, a nice product uh, with a really dark, almost purple, dark red cherry shrimp. This has been a fun tank and it's really a cool little size. It's like I said, it's 12 inch square or cube. So that makes it about 7.49 gallons if it was, you know, filled to the top and nothing else in it. So there's probably, I don't know, six gallons of water in here right now, something like that. It's a nice size. I got it on Amazon. I've had it for, geez, I don't know, maybe four or five months now. And I would get another one. In fact, I was thinking about getting one of those steel uh, kitchen racks. This uh, tubular steel legs and then the steel racks. And they're just slightly wider than this 12 inch. I think they're like 16 inch wide by uh, 12 or 14 inch deep shelves. And they'll hold six. And I was thinking about just stacking these. You know, get another four or five of these tanks, however many shelves there were on that, and just load it up and just have a bunch of cubes and maybe just do shrimp cubes. That would be fun. Oh, here's another. This is, uh, I think it's, uh, is it hy hydro, uh, no, I, I can't, hydrocotyl, hydrocotyl Japan, I think. Little clover like leaf, spreads vine like almost once it gets going. This one's just starting to get established. It was a small piece from another tank. It's one of my favorite plants. It just looks so cool. Reminds me of a garden weed called Oxalis, but regardless, it's really neat in the tanks. That's a fun one. So the baby brine shrimp, too. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I've got two videos. One on how to make a do-it-yourself brine shrimp hatchery out of a one-liter soda bottle. Uh, 
And the other one is my recipe for, I think that one's a short, uh, for doing a, for, you know, the recipe for raising the brine shrimp, how much I mix. A lot of people get really complicated with that, uh, using dechlorinators and all that. And I, I use tap water and I put about a tablespoon of just plain old iodized kitchen salt and a couple teaspoons full of uh, brine shrimp eggs. And there's, oh, there's two little least Keelys right there um, against the Java firm. One just took off around the back and another bigger one coming out. Uh, and, and then about 24 to 48 hours, I've got a full bottle full of uh, uh, baby brine shrimp. Then I shut the, shut the uh, air supply off and let the brine shrimp settle out. And most of the uh, eggshells float to the top and then I uh, uh, open it up and drain them into a one liter measuring cup and you know just the brine shrimp at the bottom and that's kind of what this looks like see there and I'll pick a little up in the and I use a pipette to uh, serve them up and that's it right there and so I would uh, if you haven't seen them go check out those two videos on uh how to make your own brine shrimp hatchery and how to, uh, um, you know, my recipe for the baby brine shrimp. And I'll, I think I even show what brand I'm using. And if I don't, I will, it, it comes in like a one pound tin, uh, like an old one pound coffee can, blue label. Not my favorite because the, uh, the, there's so many cysts in it. The, I guess that's what they're called, the empty shells. Um, and the, and the, the brine shrimp, I had another batch before. The baby brine shrimp are larger. This one, they're a lot smaller. So I guess whatever, I'll use it up because they're expensive. So I got these because they were the best price. And, you know, not always the best price is the best deal. So uh, price is what you pay, value is what you get. And these weren't necessarily the best value, I don't think. They work. Fish love them. So, but I do get a lot of a lot of a lot of waste. It seems a lot of chaff. So I, I'm going to keep shopping for brine shrimp as soon as this can's empty. I will try another batch, and I'll keep everybody posted as that goes on. It's going to be a while on that though. But anyway, thanks for watching. And it's Monday here in Southern California. Everybody have a great week.